Okay, so talked about how <clears throat> Venus can be delighted by Saturn. Now I'm going to talk about how Venus can be delighted by Mercury. This is Venus's other great friend, and the, this is another mutual friendship where they're both friends with each other. Mercury sees Venus as a friend, Venus sees Mercury as a friend. And this is something that I think a lot of people would get and appreciate and not have a hard time understanding if you studied Vedic astrology, the basics of it, or even Western. I mean, Venus is Lakshmi, uh, and Mercury is Vishnu, and Vishnu's consort is Lakshmi, you know what I mean? So even the deities match up and everything. Um, Mercury is uh, the planet that measures things, and Venus is the planet that appraises things and evaluates things. So you can see how these two go really well together. Um, these are both planets that only rule air and earth signs. So these planets have the agendas of life on earth improving, like material agenda. Their type of spirituality is more sort of material and people oriented and earth oriented rather than just ideal oriented. Um, they are, yeah, they both, um, they just both go really well together. They both are really harmonious. Um, so, when this, the, how do you know if Venus is delighted by its friend Mercury? Well, if Mercury is conjunct Venus, that's one way. And also, occasionally they will be far enough away to where they can be aspecting, but that's not very common. So it's mainly in this case where they're conjunct, or, excuse me, um, or it is when they, Venus is in the sign of Mercury, Gemini or Virgo. When it's in Gemini, one will be uh, just, one is delighted by Mercury. There's all these ideas, new possibilities, um, friends are available, you know, um, there's a lot of curiosity. So, so there's just this nice kind of a balance of Venus is love and seeking to comfort its life. Well, here's Mercury with a thousand and one options of how to do that. You know what I mean? Like Lord Vishnu. Mercury is Lord Vishnu, the one who is the God in everything. You know what I mean? The pervader. Vishnu is the the, as, the essence of the... It can't be described in words. <laughs> it's the, it's, I fumble when I try to describe it, but it's the divine intelligence that pervades all consciousness. And, you know, even one of Vishnu's names... Uh, I believe it's Shari Shripa, but I might be saying that wrong, but it's basically the thousand eyed or the infinite eye. You know what I mean? The one who the one who has basically every eye that sees, because like a thousand is basically like infinite in Sanskrit. Um, it just kind of conveys like infinity. Like when you talk about Sarashara, the thousand rayed um, lotus or the crown chakra, it just means infinity rayed, like incomprehensible amount. Um, so when it comes to Mercury... He has got so many options, you know, so many, so many possibilities, um, and that is that suits Venus's agenda because Venus's agenda is has the agenda of making life more bearable on planet Earth, making life more harmonious, more smooth. Well, how do we do that? We do that also through Mercury, through efficiency, through clear communication, through skill, you know. And so that's, that's one of the main things is that if Venus is in Gemini, Gemini is a sign of expression and, and networking and communication, one will love that. And so one will develop skill for that and they will love um, socializing, interacting and, you know, researching. So, they'll, you know, they'll love to research if they have Venus in Gemini. I know one person who's a PhD uh, person who has that Venus in Gemini on their ascendant and they're always researching, you know. Um, when Venus is in Virgo, the same things can happen, but what's funny is that you know that Venus is also fallen and debilitated and gets the weakest in Virgo. But it's actually also delighted. Hmm. So how does that work? Well, you guys can, can comment and, and be mad at me because I'm confusing you now, but I'm sorry, this is how life is. It's complicated. Um, when Mercury, the Lord of Venus and the Lord of Virgo, is strong then you will get more of the delight of Venus being delighted by Virgo and less of the debilitation but basically um, this is where it gets more tricky so it's better to have Venus delighted in another way but if it's in Virgo Venus fall in Virgo is not as bad as other planets being fallen you see so when you just study it overall what happens when a planet is fallen? Well, it can't support the houses it rules, it can't do its agenda basically, and it fails. And that is visible 
Oh, geez. <laughs> um, that's visible in your life. Um, you know, Venus can rule furniture or clothing or things like that. So, uh, you know, Venus, in that sense, if it's debilitated, one will be breaking, losing furniture, you know, clothing will fall apart for them more, more quickly. If it's got more of the delight, then maybe that's okay for them because they just lose that thing. They throw it away, they give it to goodwill, and they acquire a new thing. Because basically when, when Venus is in Virgo, they're kind of, they're still delighted by Mercury in the sense that they're always finding these new little things to love, but they don't have the true devotion of a strong Venus, like an exalted. So they leave it alone. They just like leave it eventually, or they run to another thing. And so a common placement the old books say about, about Venus in Virgo, the old books will say that it's a placement for having many wives, having lots of affairs and things like that. And that's very true um, in general. But the person may not have affairs. They may just have like... Uh, they may not have actual physical affairs, but they'll have like love affairs. Um, they'll be, you know, into reading trashy romance novels, or they'll be always, you know, um, having like little affair, love affairs with something. Oh, I'm really playing the keyboard right now. This is what I love. And so it can still interfere with them being a good partner and with them being devoted to things that are like their true dharma because they're kind of just bouncing around from things and it's like yeah this is like giving me superficial fun like superficial curiosity of mercury now i'm bored and i move to the next thing um will ferrell is an actor that comes in my mind right now because he has venus in virgo and he's seemed to make this work for him in a really positive way i'm pretty sure he's virgo rising too so it's on his ascendant and he has, and it forms other things that create acting placements because if you watch my other videos, you know that Mercury and Venus are required to be an actor. And he's kind of like a good example of making this fallen Venus, like he plays these fallen Venus people who, you know what I mean, are kind of uh, not the ideal man, <laughs> you know, not the ideal partner really, but he makes it work and for him. And he's always having these little love affairs because he's like moving from one role, one movie to the next, one role to the next. So he doesn't really have to be devoted to a relationship or to a partner or to a project for more than like four or five months to six months at a time, you know, probably at the most. And then he moves on to another thing. Um, so that's one way that uh, the Venus and Mercury can be seen in his chart, the delight, but also the debilitation. He's not really like someone who's in good health or vibrant or has viria, you know, the Venus also is the planet of Viria. He doesn't look like he's a vital person or anything like that, but he's still being delighted by Mercury, planet of acting. So, yeah, one will always tend to have these little, little kind of like love romances and affairs, and that also relates to, uh, they'll, they'll kind of like, if it's bad, now if, if that Mercury is not that strong, then this Venus is not that delighted. It's more debilitated. And that, when that happens, Venus is, um, they'll kind of cut people out of their life more. They'll be very, they'll have ultimatums. They'll be more like, uh, they'll have this very just cold business, like you're some kind of a cutthroat mercenary type of person with your relationships at times. Um, they don't, they maybe don't accept themselves or like love themselves that easily. And so then they can project that onto other people. Um, because Virgo is that side of the intestines and the digestion where we pick apart the good things that are supposed to be nutrients and then we leave alone the bad things. This is why Mercury is exalted there, the planet of discernment and discriminations. Oh, this is good, I'll keep this. Oh, this is bad, pass that on. But Venus is about like kind of trying to embrace everything. And so it doesn't, it doesn't really get that. It doesn't work as well there. Um, so they'll have difficulty where they'll like throw people out of their lives that were actually good for them because of some weird issue or they'll not keep the good people in their lives or you know what I mean or vice versa basically or they'll have bad people in their lives that they should cut out um they don't really they're not able to discern that well with relationships essentially you know what I mean they're not able to get that nitpicky Virgo-ness down when it comes to the people in their life their loves and their relationships um so they kind of like need to learn to have more of a mixed, even-minded, discerning value. Now, what's funny is that I know one person who has Mercury and Venus in Virgo. He's a Virgo rising with Mercury and Venus in the ascendant, and he is a ter he's really difficult to relate to. He like you can just see it in his head. He has no joy, and he also has a debilitated Jupiter. So he's not like 
he's like so dry and so difficult to talk to but he is an animator and so he's done really cool animation stuff with art and with penciling and drawing and so that's kind of like a, an aspect of how you can see this working and he has had relationships he has been able to have them work you know at times um and I really wish he would get readings from me because I would have all these things to counsel, but of course the two Brahmin, the two astrology plants are debilitated, Jupiter and Venus, so he doesn't ever want to take my advice. Um, so he, I don't know, haven't really seen his life improve, unfortunately, but um, he can, you know, he, he also has that quality of like having little love affairs with a thing like, ooh, I'm, I'm really into, um, you know, rock climbing right now for a few months, and ooh, now I'm really into cycling, or, and now I'm into this or that, you know what I mean? Um, I'm into this TV show or whatever, but he's really, really brilliant person. But he just has a, he has a tough time relating to people, and he seems to only see the negative and be critical of them. You know what I mean? When he needs to learn to just see the positive, and it's like, and you can see in his chart that because of these debilitated Brahmin planets, like he's not been trying to see the good in other people. Um, so I would, that's what I would counsel him to him if he did come to me. Um, so that's a little bit on Venus and Virgo. Um, really, there's more to it. I could spend hours talking about it. It's a fascinating placement, but I will move on. So, some of the other things you see, in general, this is more simple. In general, this Mercury, when Mercury and Venus are conjunct, or when Venus is in Gemini, you get this happening. And this can be in any Varga, too. Just, just take what I'm saying and apply it to that Varga, that area of life. So, if Mercury is... So, if Venus is delighted by Mercury and Gemini in the D30, then they'll use this information in a good respect to benefiting their health and avoiding misfortunes. Um, so when you got the, uh, when you have them conjunct, okay, that's the most common time thing, this the way this will happen, it happens in like one of three charts pretty much, and they will have a lot, basically Venus is like love and relationships, Mercury is curiosity, so they're really, really curious about people and relationships and in the context of whatever house or sign that's in. So, um, like my, my main astrology teacher, Ernst Wilhelm, has this placement in the eighth house of like deep psychology and in the sign of Aries, the sign of the self. So Venus, people and relations, in the sign of the self, in the eighth house of a cult, he spent his life researching and studying human psychology on a very, very deep level. You know what I mean? Um, and... You know, another woman, I know of someone who has this, a woman and a man who both have this, both have the same rising sign, and they're both Virgo, and so it's their ruling planet, Mercury, is with Venus in the third house in Scorpio. And they're both people who have been way too infatuated and obsessed with sex their whole lives, basically. You know what I mean? Because Scorpio has to do with sexuality, Venus there, Mercury... Uh, the third house of your curiosities, oh man, you can't blame them, poor thing, you know, you <laughs> probably can never stop thinking about it. Um, so, so that's kind of an, uh, and, oh, the way I, the reason that I'm saying that is because I didn't convey this earlier, but Mercury and Venus are the two planets of Rajas Guna, so they're both the most Rajasic, so there's all this excessive restlessness and, and, you know, need for stimulation in that area where they're at. So they'll get bored quickly. So like my teacher Ernst, he admits it. Like he gets very bored and wants to move on and study new things, you know, one after another. When like if I had even done half the things he've done, he's done in his life, I feel like I would be just still working with those things. You know what I mean? But he just keeps wanting to move on to new things. And, um, you know, so that's there's like this restless desire um, there sometimes. And so that can, you know, that can be good or bad, but you ha you will have to kind of, temper that and be in, keep that in mind um, because sometimes you can just get too restless there um, and so like uh, you know these these people I know another person actually I know two other astrologers who are very very good astrologers some of the ones that I like and they also have Venus and Mercury conjunct in Aries and they all yeah they also are very heavy on research like they research so much about people and they're just good astrologers um and so yeah this like uh mercury represents research and venus represents people and so yeah like i said in scorpio they might be more into sexuality oh i know another person who has this in the seventh in libra and they've had 
lots and lots of partners and had lots of babies and just yeah that's just their whole thing that's their focus you know that's what they're curious on and they from my outside perspective seem to make the same mistakes over and over and are very restless you know and and un unhappy with it um so there can be that you know there can be some negativity to it but overall it's a good placement you know and um you'd have to look at the rest of the chart to see like more of the details um but you know mercury is also skill so they're very skilled with people just in general they're very skilled with relations um when it, you know mercury's our friends and actually both those plants have to do with their friends and so they the person will like really want quality friendships uh and they will, you know, put a lot of value into their friendships and try to be a quality friend as well. Um, and they'll be very, like, diplomatic, more gracious with their friends, have more respect, or choose friends that are of, like, a higher level. Um, and they, yeah, they, they tend to be, like, kind of more diplomatic overall. And so, yeah, this is overall a good thing for Venus. It just helps Venus to fulfill its needs. Um, so even if Venus is asleep in Cancer or something, but it's, uh, you know, delighted by Mercury, then you've also got, you know, a little bit of a help in, in your Venus, okay? So there's a lot more ways you can use this. You can apply this to all the Vargas, all these other things, but this is enough for now. Um, this is Mercury delighted by Venus, or sorry, Venus delighted by Mercury. Okay, thanks you guys.